Good Youth Program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These lessons are tremendous. Everything I teach, I say that, and I say they're the most exciting ones I've ever taught. Well, this is true on these lessons today. And these are the truth about Christ being the Son of God, deity. And we have, must learn the twofold headship of Christ, the head of creation and the head of the church. Also, we see the twofold reconciliation. And we're going to be studying in the book of John and the book of Colossians are the best lessons to teach on the deity of Christ and also Hebrews. And you know, I've been teaching about Hebrews, but I did not bring out the most important things about Christ. Now in Hebrews chapter one, and we have seen that Hebrews, God is speaking to the Hebrews about his son, Christ. He is the son of God. You must remember that. So the twofold reconciliation that we're going to learn in the book of Colossians, we won't get to that today, but I want you to remember these and write these down because these are the most important lessons for the last, last days. First, the twofold headship of Christ is the head of all creation. Now, I must read John 1 to you on this very subject that is so important. And I want you to listen to this. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was Jesus Christ, and the Word was with God. The Word was made flesh, so that's Jesus. And the Word, and Jesus was with God, and the Word, Jesus, was God. You must know this. You have to believe He is truly God before you can understand the Bible and being born again. And then the second verse, the same was in the beginning with God. He's eternal. He has no beginning and no end. So here we see he's the living word. And then in verse 3, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Verse 14, you must know this also. And the Word, which is Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, the first thing you must understand that this book John, the book of John, is the, he is the apostle of love. He has given us this truth about the deity of God. And we have learned a lot of verses already, but we're going to learn a lot more. So this is 57 times in this book is love. God is love. And this is something we must all understand. And as we come to these lessons today now, I want you to understand this headship of Christ. Now, I've given it out to you already. And I didn't give you the last part. I want you to understand. You have to repeat these lessons. That's how important they are. The twofold headship of Christ. He is the head of all things. He is the head of all things. Everything that was made, he made. This is the creation. He is the head of the church. 
there is no other person, no religions, no organizations, anything but to know that Christ is the head of the body of believers. There is no way that you can get to heaven any other way except through Christ. And this is the message that we have for every person today. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. And this is what we must understand. And then we see the twofold reconciliation. We're going to learn that in Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Now, these are things that you must study in these lessons because you can never know these apart from studying these scriptures. Colossians 1, verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So what is reconciliation? The reconciliation of creation and our reconciliation as the church. So what is reconciliation? A restoration of unity. We must have unity. We are one in Christ and he's the head of this body of believers. And in the last, last days, we must teach he's the only true God. And this is important because of all the religions, all the gods today, there's only one. So the twofold ministry then is the gospel preached in all the world, the whole universe. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is our command. And then the church is to present every man perfect in Christ. Colossians 1, 28. So reconciliation to reconcile is a restoration of unity. And as I just read, having made peace through the blood. This is the beginning of the greatest lessons you are going to know about Christ. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank Thee and praise Thee that Thine is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. And all that's in the heaven and the earth is Thine, and Thine is the great, great Creator of all things. And we are rejoicing today as we come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. This world has the greatest need today. The only thing, only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. Every person is lost in darkness without Christ. And he wants to bring you out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto him. This is our prayer today. And may God reveal these truths to you through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. Open every person's heart that they may behold wondrous things out of thy Word. And thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we were studying about the deity of Christ in the book of John. So today we're going to go back. In him are embodied all the treasures of the divine wisdom. Now this is in Colossians chapter 2. 
Now, as you understand these, you're going to see chapter 2, verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then, as we see this, this is the collective thought of God. The collective thought of God. And here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. And what is this mystery we are going to see in one, chapter 1 of Colossians, verse 27? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And as we said before, who we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Every man perfect. Wherefore, I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. What a Bible verse for us. These are the greatest blessings you can ever have is to know him and the power of his might. That's what he wants us to know, that we may know Christ. This is his desire. And then we will not be deceived by all the evil forces around us today. If you don't know this book, you're going to be deceived by lies and the deceitfulness of Satan. He is from eternity, but especially of deity. Especially of deity. Now, we already read John 1. And then we must also read verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And then we see 14 through 18. Now, we already read 14. The incarnate Son of God. This is, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. John bare record of him, witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cameth after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. This is what we learn in these lessons. And then we go to John 4. John 4, 9 through 11. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to you, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living waters. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus saith unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
John 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, the thing that we must learn in these lessons, only deity is to be worshipped, never man. This is the most important lesson you are ever going to learn. If we worship man, God's word says in Jeremiah 17, 5, if we, now I should turn there so I can read it to you, but you know that these scriptures are given to us to learn and we are to obey what his word says. Jeremiah 17, 5, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh the flesh of maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. You depart from the Lord when you worship him, worship man. And then in verse seven is for those of us that worship him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. You see, this is what is wrong with the world today. And then in John 8, 46, the holiness and resurrection of Christ prove his deity. The holiness and resurrection of Christ. Now we're going to read. Now write these scriptures down because you have to learn them. And if you don't have, know my website, this will be on my website, and that is gloriousmessage.com. So this is John 8, 46, and listen what he says. John 8, 46. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? This is the truth. This word is as pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. It's the only living word. John 8, 56 through 58. Jesus saith, well, let's read 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto them, unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He teaches of his deity all through these lessons. Christ himself affirmed his deity. He applied himself to Jehovah, I am, in chapter 10 of John. This Jesus asserts his deity from chapter 10, verse 22, all the way down to 33. I'm not going to read all of this, but I want you to listen what he says. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not. Because you are not of my sheep, I said unto you, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man's able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? You see, they rejected him. And people today reject someone that is so great. Listen what this says about our Heavenly Father and Christ. 
Christ in John 6, 33. I have to read this to you because this is so important. John 6, I, this book has everything we need and we will never be deceived. For the bread of God is he which cometh, cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And then in 41 and 42, listen at this. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? All of these speak to us in a way that no person could do what Christ did has done. All that he's created, without him, there nothing would could be. Everything would cease to be without him. Everything. So I want you to listen at these lessons. I want you to hear what this is. Christ gives himself unreservingly, but we have no more of him than faith appropriates. Then, listen to this in Joshua 1, 2, and 3. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. As we are not nourished by memory of food, as we are not nourished by memory of food, so neither can spirituality be subtained on past appropriations of Christ. This is daily as our food is daily. If we get up today and we think about the food we ate yesterday, that doesn't do anything for our physical body. To learn about Christ today and forget him tomorrow, then Satan already has our thoughts and the things of the world has our spirituality is gone when we think of the things of the world because they are enmity to God. They are our enemies. So as we see these and learn what he has for us, why would we not study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed? And then we see in Matthew 14, 33. These are the most important lessons you're ever going to have, and you've got to study them and study them and study them. We cannot quit studying the Word of God. And this is so amazing. Matthew 14, 33. Matthew, listen at this. They that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Can you say this today? Can you say this in your heart? And then we see supreme worship should be paid to Christ alone. Only deity is worthy of worship. Only deity is to be worshipped, the glorious worship of God. Now we're going to turn to, he, to the book of Revelation, and we want you to understand this because when John wrote this book about worshiping an angel, the the and John, this is. Revelation 22, verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. For then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophet, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And then we turn to Revelation chapter 1. Listen at this. We must see this. 1 verse 5. 
and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And then we turn to five. Well, let's read verse six because we're priests of God. We're going to learn that. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to be, him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And then we turn to Revelation 5, verse 12. Listen at this, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And then Revelation 5, verse 13. This is the universal adoration of the Lamb. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And then in Revelation 4, verse 9. And these, be, those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat upon the throne who liveth forever and ever. Remember, this is a heavenly calling. This is a heavenly divine worship. This is a heavenly divine message. The, now, this is Revelation 4, verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive power and honor and glory, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created.